two important points there. We always, we always think that, uh, so corals, oh, they, they live off of their, their zooxanthellae. They get a large proportion, not all, but a large proportion of their energy from zooxanthellae. Remember, zooxanthellae are algae. They can't fix nitrogen. No algae. Can only, only this group of microbes can fix nitrogen. Have you ever used a bottled bacteria product in your reef aquarium and you thought to yourself, what exactly are the bacteria that I'm adding to my reef aquarium and what exactly do they do? Well, in today's video, I'm revisiting a conversation that I had with Ken from Hydraspace and he sells a bottled bacteria product called PNS ProBio and many other products as well but the PNS bacteria strain is the purple non-sulfur photosynthetic bacteria. This bottled bacteria product is specifically made as a coral food. This is something that you feed to your corals. Now, along with it being a coral food, there are some potential side benefits of having the purple non-sulfur bacteria in your reef aquarium. And it's really fascinating what this purple non-sulfur bacteria can do. So in our conversation, we talked about the nitrogen cycle, denitrification, and nitrogen fixation, and many other things. So if you're wondering what is all that, what did you just say? Don't worry, take a look at these clips that I found interesting from our conversation as Ken breaks down what purple non-sulfur bacteria is, what it's used for, and some of those benefits. Every system is different, and few systems resemble a natural coral reef. Um, in some of the most important ways with where these uh, bacteria are concerned. So first of all, we consider them a food. They're excellent for that purpose. Um, now, if, uh, if you're hoping that um, they're going to uh, populate the tank, um, and they might, then you're usually going to want to um, provide a habitable, ha habitable space for them, preferably an anaerobic and illuminated space. And that mm -hmm. could be as simple as like a bio block that you throw in a refugium where it gets some light. Um, but uh, yeah, um, there's <clears throat> in, in terms of like, so yeah, so where you said na uh, like to balance the uh, nitrogen, the important thing there is that they're diazotrophs and this, uh, this species, not just purple non-sulfur bacteria in general, but the species in ProBio, Rhodopseudomonas palustris, is known to live inside of corals. And in fact, they even regulate the number, the, their, their internal symbiotic populations of this, this particular species, um, along with change, seasonal changes of nitrogen availability. So um, in the seasons, I think it's summer, um, generally when nitrogen uh, is, uh, Le even less available on a coral reef, um, then corals will take up more of this species. And instead of consuming them, they actually incorporate them uh, into their bodies, just like they do zooxanthellae. Um, and then they, they uh, uh, perform uh, diazotrophy. They fix nitrogen, by the way. So two important points there. We always, we always think that uh, so corals, oh, they, they live off of their, their zooxanthellae. They get a large proportion, not all, but a large proportion of their energy from zooxanthellae. Remember, zooxanthellae are algae. They can't fix nitrogen. No algae. You can only, only this group of microbes can fix nitrogen. All algae do, like other plants, is fix carbon. So they can take CO2 from the environment and make sugars and... Uh, that you know they are then the um, coral can use to make other uh, organic materials but it's that algae that fixes the carbon form well so then where does the where do zooxanthellae get fixed nitrogen in an environment like a coral reef where it's so scarce they get it from diazotrophs so these bacteria live inside the coral they fix nitrogen and they do it in very close association to with the uh, zooxanthellae in fact, the, the zooxanthellae and the coral actually uh, give the uh, bacteria organic material to, to, to feed on and uh, in addition to the protection and all that that they afford. But then it's the uh, diazotrophic bacteria that provide the nitrogen to the zooxanthellae. And by the way, 
while we're on the subject or on the topic of uh, nitrate, we always think that nitrate is going to, to feed our corals. Uh, nitrate is not the preferred source of nitrogen for zooxanthellae. It's ammonia. <laughs> so um, th they uh, have to go through a lot of trouble to get ammonia if you just have nitrate in your water. Uh, they sometimes will actually have nitrifying bacteria living inside of them and get this. So they have to have, <laughs> so they take the nitrate, they have to, you have denit and denitrifying bacteria. So you have, so you have the nitrate, you have a uh, denitrifying bacteria that um, make nitrogen gas, but before it's released out into the uh, environment, then, then the uh, um, nitrogen fixers take that, uh, that dinitrogen gas and then make ammonia out of it. So it's kind of a weird, you know, backwards process when we assume that, you know, the nitrate is going yeah. to feed corals. It's a very inefficient way of doing it. And also the worst part is that it promotes algal growth. So um, it, with, with respect to nitrate, again, you don't see that much nitrate on a coral reef. And that's the reason they're coral reefs. They wouldn't be coral reefs if there was a bunch of nitrate. They would be algal turf and, uh, and kelp forests. Um, uh, corals necessarily, even though they would like to have that nitrogen, they necessarily live in a nitrogen poor environment because they cannot compete with benthic algae. They don't grow as fast as benthic algae. So what happens is when we have a bunch of algae growing in the tank because we have a lot of nitrates, those algae not only overgrow and smother the coral, but it's less, it's not as well known amongst aquarists that there's another thing happening. Algae release exudates, they exude these substances, uh, they're organic substances, and they're like junk food to bacteria. Uh, a lot of bacteria feed on it. It's the same bacteria that feed on the normal sources of, of carbon in a, in a reef like uh, coral mucus. However, they behave differently when they're given what biologists call it. It's like a junk food, these algal uh, substances that, that algae leach into the water. And they grow rapidly, these bacteria, these heterotrophs that are aerobes, they consume all, all the oxygen locally around the surface of the, around, just around the coral, create a hypoxic zone around the coral. The, uh, algae is growing and it can actually harm the coral. And they think that that's partly where coral diseases start from is the stress. So nit nitrate is a really bad thing, even indirectly, right? Yeah, so refugiums are a good thing, for example, but if we over rely on ketomorpha or, or uh, especially um, as we learned in the past, calerpa, um, for, for nitrate export, then other bad things happen partly because of the sorts of um, chemicals, uh, the, the uh, substances that these algae release around the coral. It's well known to uh, coral reef biologists, but aquarists kind of underestimate the harm they're doing um, to their aquariums by allowing all this algae to grow because it is not natural. Um, to, the corals are not equipped to compete with the algae nor to um, uh, sustain the damage that's yeah. caused these uh, chemicals, which by the way, sometimes were developed by the algae to fight um, other organisms like corals. They're, they're by design, they're noxious. But again, yeah, that's just another bad consequence of having too much nitri nitrate. Carbon, you know, there, there are all kinds of means of getting rid of that. The, the obvious easy one, I even promote water changes over my bacteria because I mean, water changes are the surest, cheapest, easiest, safest way to bring yourself back to that original ideal you know, all the, uh, per, a set of water parameters. But um, I think a lot of people, number one, um, that gets costly depending on their availability of uh, RO, DI water. And mm -hmm. also, I mean, then you're, you're, you're depriving yourself of that thing that originally wanted these bacteria to be, which is a coral food, a natural, live, non-polluting, incredibly nutritious coral food. So... It's really interesting to me that um, uh, that corals actually prefer uh, this PNS bacteria and they attract them in, right? 
Well, the, the actual group, um, so Rhodocinomonas palustris, the, the species that's in ProBio, um, that's a purple non-sulfur bacteria, and it's also a rhizobial bacteria. So not all bacteria, not all rhizobial bacteria are purple non-sulfurs, and not all purple non-sulfurs are rhizobia. They're, they're attracting, they're creating a, a, a really hospitable uh, environment for this particular type of uh, bacteria, the rhizobial bacteria that, that benefit them by benefiting their zooxanthellae by providing them with uh, fixed nitrogen in the form of ammonia, which again, zooxanthellae prefer. They're actually kind of, they're kind of uh, janitors too, because these bacteria, their food source is the actual waste products of the coral and the zooxanthellae. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and watch the entire conversation right here. Make sure you are subscribed to the Coral Reef Talk. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.